Uh, she'd give me the finger. Oh, she'd let me know. We're on? Thank you. Um, we were supposed to start budget meetings with uh, various departments, but no one has their budgets in, right? Is that what I saw? I believe they worked it with the finance committee. Oh, they were? Two out of four appeared tonight. Robert came, sent a, did I see an email from Robert that he couldn't make it or something? So, moderator and historical or? Moderator cemetery. and cemetery. Cemetery. Didn't make it, right? So, the two you had come in? Pardon? Which two did you have come? Actually, I emulate because I work with uh, these folks. We had historical and um, uh, veterans. Yeah. Uh, we're finding that the, um, the spreadsheet is very difficult for uh, smaller groups, uh, not department heads, but the commissions and, and um, you know, the volunteer groups. We think we can get simplify that for them. Um, but uh, we are concerned that people do submit their budget requests in a timely fashion. Uh, we didn't see uh, anything until tonight. Uh, we do have several uh, uh, next week's people who submitted their budget requests. Uh, so we do have people next that have sent in for yeah, next week. Yeah, I think uh, three of the five. Uh, but we're, we're slipping. Would it help if we send out another memo to departments that Budgets are expected to be in on time for whatever it's worth. It would, help. It would help if the memo gets out, yes. Would we please do that, Reg? Mm -hmm. Could we ask to get copies of the budgets that you did get? That we didn't get them, right? I don't think well, we right. haven't gotten anything writing. We're having to put it together. Ourselves. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. There, you. Well, no, we we received the um, we received Donna's, we received Vicky's, and then the assessor gave us one in hard copy, not electronically. No, I mean tonight, tonight for, uh, but for next week. Okay. Those we received. But well, whatever we can. Those. Whatever you can forward on to us, could we please get those? Okay. Can I ask a question? Are we going to be redundant here and you see them, we see them? Because it seems like it's taking up a lot of time. I think maybe what we should talk about that. Um, I think maybe we should, if we get the budgets in and we have any questions about it, or and or if they want to come to us for something. Well, the only issue is if you say something, we say something, and you know the coordination is going to get messed up. So we need to have a plan. Well, that's I guess. We need to, we, yes, we do. Yeah. I was going to say one thought is you want to send one representative to the meetings from the board. There's one right here. Yes. From the board. From Our board, not. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I only want one, one member from. Yeah. You may want to alternate that too. Not a bad idea. There's at least one here. We could alternate. Yeah. Alternate. We that do. way. I'll Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea that everybody takes a turn. I think it's a darn good idea. I think so too. Since it was worse. <laughs> Um, I think that would be a good idea. So we all get various, no one's overly burdened, burdened and taxed, and everybody gets a little taste of what the budget process is. Yeah, I think is. that's a good one, yeah. So who wants to volunteer next week? Six o'clock. I'll go. Okay. Right, six o'clock gets difficult. I'll do six. I said I'll go. Uh, oh, Who's next pick? week? I didn't mean to take Accountant, it. treasurer. Wait a minute. You can't pick. No, I want, the, I want like big, in depth, a lot to learn, a lot of pieces. That's what I want. Is that next week? Uh, well, next week we have the town clerk, treasurer, collector, assessors, town accountant, and tree warden. Done. I'll be there. Six o'clock. Uh, as one of the minor committees, historical, historical commission, uh, I have to agree that the budget process for, for our small committee with a relatively small request is quite confusing. So we present it verbally tonight and hopefully that will get the right for you. Well, basically we ask for level funding uh, uh, and we specify uh, what our expenditures will be for fiscal 2015. I, I, need, I, I, I do want to mention to the select board that for committees like ours, and I'm sure you're probably going to hear this from other people too, uh, I am assuming that uh, the master plan implementation will probably not take place to any degree of expenditures of money uh, in fiscal year 2015, and so therefore we totally ignored what, what may be necessary for our uh, charge 
uh, to implement the master plan uh, as voted on by the select board. So I have to say that our level funding uh, uh, submission is based on not having to take any money from our budget for that purpose. How much money was that? Well, we're, asking, we're asking $1,700. No, for the master plan. Now, what, was, what did they ask? What would your charge be for the master plan? I have no idea. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Be, All right. because, 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 because there has not been enough discussion uh, on the, on the uh, part of the master plan implementation committee. I believe they're meeting for the first time tomorrow. Right. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what sort of imposition there will be on committees like ours. Well, it yeah. won't be a mandate for sure. Well, I think if there's any, any funding, I think it should be it should be coming out of the general fund and not out of your yearly budgets. Well, it shouldn't be a burden on to you to, to do what you need to do. It needs to be discussed. Yeah. But you, you, need, need, to, you need to plan for it, no matter what. Right. Yeah. But it's not, my understanding is it's not going to be a mandate. It, it's more going to be like a gentle shove and trying to move everybody so that people aren't going in opposite directions as opposed to everybody moving in the same direction. Some of which may, may require expenditure of money. Some of which may require expenditure of money, which I'm going to anticipate is going to have to come out of the individual. But that would have its own budget, the master. Yeah, that's how the master's own budget. Yeah. Why would they yeah. implement that? It's not yeah. yeah. Well, well, I think it should be if, individual if they need any yeah. money, they should have their own budget. Uh, I, don't well, I don't want to complicate it. No, when I, heard this one, I can't see some. It is a consideration on, on committees such as mine. Right. Thank you very much. Can I ask you one quick question while you're here? The old firehouse. Can we knock it over? I, I'm not. <laughs> I was not prepared to discuss that tonight. I want to tell you this. Uh, we will study it as a, as a commission. Uh, it is in a national historic district. Uh, accepted by the state in a national historic district. It is a contributing building which means that uh, state or federal funds cannot be used to knock that building over. Mm. Further than that, uh, I'm in the process of studying it. I did some work on that today and yesterday, and uh, I'm hopeful that we will have a meeting with you folks uh, to be able to tell you, advise you a little bit better about what is or isn't. I'm sure you're aware of the, the structural concerns for the building, that there's three quarter million dollars worth of equipment within the building and yet the building itself does have these structural issues. So I know it does. I'm just I but I'm very you know man commonsensical. It's like Luke, you know, we got very expensive equipment in a building that needs either to be renovated or, you know, yes. Not used anymore. So yes. okay. Can I ask one question of you? Is there anything from the state or federal historical societies that would lend support to move that building somewhere else in town. I think it would fall apart. I'm just asking. Okay. I, I sent a, a email to Reggie today from the Mass Historical Commission for, there, there's a new round of uh, preservation grants that is opening up right now, uh, three quarters of a million dollars for uh, purposes for preserving historical sites. Uh, uh, this site might qualify. I do have to say that it is a extremely competitive Grant. It's a matching grant. It's an extremely competitive grant. <clears throat> My personal opinion is that that even if we put up a real strong case for it, that I doubt that we mm -hmm. get. It. However, that's a personal opinion. But that the answer to your question is there are there are ways there are grants available for that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, whether it qualifies or not. I don't know. But I, I think it's a subject that we will discuss one within last, the next three or four weeks. Yeah. One one last thing is that I mean there is a there's a aesthetic value to the structure, the, the brick layout and whatnot. There's what a historic value. Well, it, it does have, but also if, if we couldn't rehab or move the building, and we didn't use state or federal funds to, to remove the building, would the historical uh, commission want to be involved in sort of preserving some of the aesthetic imaging on the new public safety sort of sort of you know, some sort of facade that sort of mimics what the old station looked like, but in a new structure. You know, you know what I'm saying. It just yes. Okay. I would have to mark by the rest of the, the rest of the commission. Okay. Uh, it's an ambitious project for us, if that's what you're asking. Um, if you're talking about not using any federal or state funds, you can do whatever you want with it. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much.
would community preservation funds be available for something like that? Might be. Yeah, that may be a way to go. That's state funded. The, Half of that, uh, some of that money that is state funded. Yeah. The, the problem with that, good, bad, or indifferent, is the building is in such poor condition as whether anything can be done for it. Um, we have a, at 820, which is 817, we have a joint meeting with the Board of Health, Building Inspector, Town Accountant, Treasurer, Collector, Personnel Policy Procedure Board. Um, concerning the issue of part-time employees working under 20 hours a week. Um, I was, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. You have the veterans agent here. Did you want to? Oh, that's right, too. Oh. And, and I'm just wondering, I, I guess I have a question for finance. I skipped, I'm sorry. I skipped. Did the two budgets that you were presented with, did, I mean, this is my first time going through this. Is there anything that raises any red flags that we need to think about or? They're so small. Well, no, that's what I didn't know. Very, no. Very small budgets. We could double them, you wouldn't notice. Okay, so there's nothing, you know, you got two today and things are moving and with those two That's why smoothly as you, as, as could go at the moment. Okay. It's the, you know, the highway, the fire, the uh, police, and those, treasurer and company. Okay. Yeah. Just, um, highway department budget um, needs to be put together. I didn't do it because, well, who got to do it? And that was several months ago. It'll be a priority. I'll work with him this week on it to try to get that going. Um, it might be, I think that's February 4th. Yes. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> you know, um, if not, just keep but I won't get anything right away to you. I know you have a deadline. I just want to let you know that I won't meet that deadline, but I'll get you a copy. Okay. Know if we need to move it, just let us know ahead of time. I apologize. I skipped over a line on the thing for the veteran's sake. My apologies. A lot to draw. Can we, anything that you need to tell us, or? I don't believe so. I, it's, I don't care if you have any questions, but it's pretty much the same as last year. It fluctuates. It's hard to predict. Depending on the money. benefits that are given out. Sorry? Depending on how many people sign up. It, exactly. I mean, uh, the first, the better half of this year, the budget, you know, I would have asked for 60000 for the year, because that's what we were paying. It was, it was about 5000 a month. And, and since then, there's two cases that were terminated, um, one game, but now we're up, we're up around, we're down to around 3,000 a month. Um, but a lot of that gets reimbursed, right? 75% yep. of that gets reimbursed to the town from the state. Um, but then in addition to that, there's my stipend, um, which I'm open to doubling if you guys want to do that. Let's <laughs> <laughs> <Or, laughs> do Have you looked at it? It's, it's hard to predict, it really is. But have you looked at trends <laughs> of the past five years and over what was what was spent budgeted? Have you looked at the, the trending for the past five years? No, I didn't go back five years, no, but that's that's that would tell us something, that history, um, I mean for this town. Yeah, and then the other question, because I'm not exactly sure who qualifies. If it's is it active veterans that qualify or um, any veteran or it's not any veteran. Um, it's it's Veterans as defined under uh, Mass General Law 115. So, I mean, there's people that have served 20 years faithfully in the Army or Air National Guard, and they're not a qualifying veteran okay. um, because they did not serve uh, and they, they weren't engaged in any of the deployments. Uh, they're not in any areas of theater. They're okay. not combat veterans, and they didn't does, do any active duty time. Does, so it does Iraqi 1 and 2 in Afghanistan, as those are, are, are slowing down, the troop deployment slows down, the troops come back. How does that affect your budget? Are you seeing an increase or a decrease or the same? Or it doesn't affect it at all. Doesn't affect my it. budget, the, the veterans that are collecting now or widows of veterans are, are <coughs> World War II, okay. Vietnam era. Okay. So I, in, in, in 20 years from now, it'll, it'll affect, but not, okay. not right now. Not right now. Okay. We you. did have one case from, from Iraq, you know, a younger gentleman, okay. um, but he's, his, um, Benefits of terminating because he's collecting from another source. Okay. Thank you. Is the job going where you expected it? Or it is. It's, it is. It's, it's a little well, actually, it's a little more than what I expected, which is good. It's a lot more, there's a lot more details, a lot more than I could have ever imagined, but it's, it's good for me personally. I'm learning a lot. And, it, um, and because of all these different um, programs and questions and, and things that cross my desk, it, 
I, I'm enjoying it. I, I, I like it. Um, I work with, um, of course, the accountants um, as far as submitting payment every month and work with Donna and the Treasury Department. And, and it's balanced, you know, to the penny every month. Um, so I always just try to stay on top of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Liz has a I question. have a question for the Finance Committee. What can we do to help you with this process? I mean, with, with the exception of sending out memos and hoping that people respond with their budgets, is there any other, any other steps that you think that we could be taking to yeah. move this along so we don't end up in the same spot we were last year? Well, I, I don't want to be worried because we've got, I think, everything out there. It's just a matter of getting them back. I think the key is if we don't get back uh, next, what we need for next week by a certain date, we need to tell you. And I think one of you needs to call. Because there's certain department heads who are going to delay, gonna delay and, or not give us the information we need. And it's bad when they, you come to a meeting and, okay, where's all this backup, where's this information? Oh, that's what I got. Okay, let's reschedule it. So people need to be prepared when they come. What about the, when would you reschedule the moderator and the cemetery commission for? Yeah, look at the schedule. I mean, they're small, so we have to extend our... I'm thinking if you if we gave a memo when you know that date if we send a memo that you will be expected to you know make that more uh, not go over dead date. Are there any repercussions for not turning your your budgets in on time? Is, is there anything you can do? And we like listen, you waited till the last minute, you're out of luck. Well, I would say we'll have fun. Go lunch, lady. I'm just saying, like if people aren't gonna if, if this has been spelled out for months and months and months and people aren't gonna follow 5 that. Five percent budget decrease from last year. What can you do? What can we do? <coughs> next steps to say, can you just get it in on time? If you don't, make them cookies. <laughs> well, maybe I won't make them cookies. <laughs> I, I'm just, there needs to be some follow through, I think, and if a phone call from four seconds, what has to happen then? I think Mike should call. Thanks, David. <laughs> well, I'll call. I'm sorry. February 11th. Oh, I'm sorry, February 11th. Okay, so would, Reggie, would you send out something from me to um, cemetery and moderator that their budgets must be in by February? No, they're going to meet with us on February 18th. Right. The budget needs to be in the week before that. So that'd be February 11th. The okay. budget needs to be in February 11th, and you. Well, why don't, why are we giving them all that time? Tell that time. Do. No, what I mean, it was due already. Right, exactly. So. So why don't we say it's got to be in two weeks from today? And what about the two that you haven't heard from from next week? Can we send them a memo that says, well, FYI, reminder, your budget is you're due to meet with the finance committee next week. Mm -hmm. week. At Tree Warden, David Garcia, uh, he's away on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, she's back. Um, those were due when? Oh, those are due next, next week. week. So just a gentle reminder. Uh, we yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So a reminder that they're due. Okay. Now. For that. Now. Now. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes. We're going to move on to the joint meeting with the Board of Health. I'll be there at 6 o'clock. Building inspector, town accountant, treasurer, collector, personnel policy. But I've been informed that personnel policy is not attending. So, as, as far as I know, this meeting was um, first requested by the board of selectmen last week to kind of resolve the issue. The PQB met last Wednesday with um, board of health and building inspector, who also requested that the boards come together. Or if I'm miss. Yeah. Um, so the Board of Health is not going to be around for the next week. So the first was to meet on We're Wednesday or Thursday, right was to meet on Wednesday or Thursday, um, and we had the opening, so we put it on today. Um, the Board of Health would prefer that this topic was discussed in executive session with a mediator. Um, I was hoping that this topic could be fixed by talking more about the policy versus the person in open session. That is not the opinion of Board of Health. Policies and procedures is um, not here. Well, two of us are here, myself and Art, um, and the other two are not. Um, Where did they think it was going to come under? I think under litigation. Is that one of the ten? There's no litigation. Pending. There's no litigation going on here. Okay. It's just a violation of town bylaw. Okay. So the P 
TQB sent a memo stating that uh, they thought that until there, let me just get it. And it's clear we're not talking. Let's be clear. We're not talking about the person. No, we're talking about the policy. The policy and the position that, that is drawing a benefit. It's in your packets. I know. I thought I had a hard copy of it too. To read it. Mm -hmm. You don't page it's on Mujie. I think what really needs to happen here is that if the if the PQB is not here in a whole to present their side of the story, I know that the Board of Selectmen has already given their opinion on what should happen based on the opinion of Town Council. That needs to be more clearly communicated to department heads. Clearly. Yes, we're going to pay, or no, we're not. Or, or, no, we're not. I, we were, I thought we were clear the last time, but... I thought that we were also very clear, but then the payroll was submitted again with... There's been payroll submitted with holiday pay. And so, yeah. obviously, it's not been very clear. Well, and there's a holiday pending on Monday. Right. Um, the memo from the Personal Policy Procedures Board said this is a formal recommendation that benefits Four employees are not to be changed or discussed publicly until all parties are in, all parties involved have met and discussed the matter in person. This is this is horse bucky. This is this is the, the bylaws of the town that's been vetted by our town council. This is making something out of nothing and it should not go any further. This person shouldn't be paid. They're working less than twenty hours a week. It's in black and white. I would say that a, a I guess maybe a phone call needs to be made to all department heads, not a memo that says the. Well, you can't call everybody, but well, didn't we didn't we make this clear by saying that no one under 20 hours gets holiday pay? I thought it was very clear. I don't know how much clearer we can make it. Um, I'm certainly not going to sit and call all the department heads and commissions to tell them that they can't do what's been clearly said they can't do. Well, I mean, who's who's doing the payroll? Who's okay in this payroll? Up to, I mean, it's signed by the, the department, head. department head, but we don't have to pay it. Anybody want to chime in? Are you saying you have a department head that is not going along with what you told him or her to do? It's an elected official, and we're not to... following the bylaws. If that be the case, I don't want that person to sit right there and make it very clear. Well, I, I think the townspeople should know they have an elected official that's not following the, the, the uh, bylaws and paying somebody for holiday pay that doesn't deserve that pay by our bylaws, as said by the town council. They have to hold that elected official one, one accountable. Period. I'm not, sure, right. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Right. It just seems like that's what they need to do. In, in fairness, this is why I don't want to talk about it. I mean, in fairness, this person's been being paid for this time for a long time. A long time. And that's why I'm not sure that it's very. You know, well, but if, just because we've made a mistake in the past, we're not going to continue to make a mistake. We need to stop the mistake. I mean, what we're doing is rehashing what we did before. Right. There's no understanding. There's no commitment by all the parties to be. Well, I thought last week we asked to have them all notified to be here so we could discuss this once and for all, whether we agree with them or don't agree with them, that, that we would walk out of here with an understanding of what our bylaws were. And they, in fact, asked for the meeting. Go ahead. Can I just make a point here? Um, I was never invited to this meeting. I get a, uh, an email with the agenda on Monday at 11.30. That's not inviting me to this meeting. I think there was poor communication on your part. Same I'm here. Same with Don. Okay, so I will say that I did have a conversation with Reggie, and um, we had talked about, she told me that boards have to post their own agendas and so I gave that information for the PQB to post that meeting on their behalf and they weren't coming so it didn't get posted. I was supposed to invite and talk to you and, and ask you to come and I did not. So I thought it was the select board. I, I, thought it was well, I am the select board um, and so I should have said that. All right. Just a quick, quick uh, comment. I knew on this particular board yeah, I don't have too much hair left, but uh, one, do, one thing I do see, and it's very confusing, is that I believe there are like four bylaws out there that uh, 
I don't, I don't know which one you're basing this on, but you know everybody seems to have a different interpretation and a different bylaw in front of them. Uh, that, that's one of the things we need to work on and fix uh, that may have caused some of the, the issues here. Though Liz tells me that this particular person was given a bylaw, and I believe the bylaw she was given did state that uh, you know, the, so I think they've all been. I think I don't think that's been changed in any of the various. I, my my impression. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that changed. I I don't know. I mean, all, all I know is there's an interpretation of part-time fish. Uh, part-time yeah, definition of part -time. Right. Uh, that's, right. That's what you should be going. With. Right. There's a definition of part-time employment. Regular part-time employment and part-time employment. I think is the distinction. Well, there's a, there's a, I can read you what Joe Ferris said, or the person we paid the, and, and the, to, and to let's make this Yeah, opinion. and I think the research I, that I've been led to believe is that 97 is the one that the bylaw that's supposed to be. Yes. Anything that she has a date after 97 is discarded. 97, we've got to go back to 97 to get the date. But this is Joe Ferris' comment in an email that was dated on December 17th of last year. And it basically, the last paragraph, on an ongoing, ongoing forward basis, the attachment, attached documents do not change my prior opinion as to what the personal bylaw states about part-time employees who work less than 20 hours a week. <coughs> I.A., they are not eligible for the various benefits discussed. That would be holiday pay. And that's the legal opinion. And that's, and I, that's, also, I'm no attorney, but that's the legal also, opinion. If you look at the administration of the bylaw, policy procedures board, is the administrator of the contract, of the bylaw. All right, and I'm not saying I, I know I was witness to this. I just heard a comment that personal policy had a ruling on it already, and they said that was not so. What's not so? The twenty of uh, the, uh, the benefits. No, they're they not here the to bylaw? say to me one way or the other. That's why I wanted to see everybody here to have it's a discussion. Have Ed, Ed, this is not going to happen. They're well, not going to show up. This is all about political gamesmanship, and it's not going to happen. So I would say I that going you. forward, we need to make it very clear that the decision of the board is... Our, your decision of our board. The decision of our board, the select board, is that, and if I'm wrong, speak up, employees who work less than 20 hours per week are not paid for holiday pay effective at the beginning of the next payroll whatever we have one in front of us i don't want to go back and ask for any money or holiday that's not my intent no i don't want to say i, I would agree <clears throat> with you that we don't ask for any money back but i don't think you can pay if you're sitting with a warrant article in front of you that you know is incorrect you can't i don't think you can sign it i'm not going to sign it Isn't this like because we, we're digging the hole deeper we've made the mistake we let it go for a couple of times because we were hassling out the problem we said we would I've, I've spoken with Joe, personally with Joe Fair for length on this, and he said it would not be where it wise to try and get the money back. So we told the employee, or the, I told the department head that we would not be seeking the money back, but the intent, you know, that... And how can someone intentionally take money from the town that they know they're not entitled to? That's not the issue here. It's not the issue. Well, the issue, to me, it's, it's part of the issue because the you're issue, getting... No, the, the issue can be defined, I think, very clearly. Do employees who work less than 20 hours a week get benefits? No. 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 Okay. Then that's, that's, that's it. So now how do we get but that clearly to department heads who are signing payroll? How do we get that information to them well, I, and we, make them follow it? I, we will send out a memo that clearly says, in the opinion of the select board, employees working less than 20 hours are not to receive benefits. We've, the last time we attached a copy of the memo, which I thought explained the whole situation. It's but been that way since 2004, since I've been on the board. So I don't think, see anything when it changed. I don't. I agree with you, but if somebody wants to point blank, the answer is no. You don't pay them. Yes. I'm appalled at this blatant disregard for a order and compliance with a bylaw. Now, Nilda, you were a select person before. I was a select board person, and I never had this problem. The board never was uh, refused by a town official, an employee, a department head. They may have put up a fight, but they did follow. The fact that the building, the health, the board of health, are not here 
is because they're stalling, they're preventing further action. They don't want to engage in a conversation. The other part of this is the personal policies board should be here regardless of how they feel. They are a unit. They, they have been elected to serve the interests of the town and the employees. And people are just sort of deciding. I would not use the word, um, you use rather than authorize. Um, pardon me? Did you say recommend? Did I? You recommend. Well, it should be stronger right? than recommend. Right. It should be, you are, would, you are not to. And the other part of this is the department head signs this. Okay, so they're in violation. Where does the payroll go after the department head gets it? Does it get reviewed by you? No and way. then it goes to, for payment? How do you know? The town. We get it in my office to enter it so we can post what expenses have been paid out into the ledger. And then it goes to the treasurer's office they to should, actually do the test. You guys chart. approve it last. Last, right. we're the last so step. Can, so can Vicki or Donna stop it? on its track before it comes to you because they know that that's it has to be stopped it. before it gets to us because otherwise right. we're, we're, mean, we're here it's sitting here just holding up everybody's payroll well, can we just amend the, the, the payroll warrant and subtract the hours from that amount well let's go one more time okay I, I don't i don't think it's my job in my department to stop that if, if the department head is signing off on something that you have told them not to to me, that's where it needs to stop. If I were to pull a payroll that was submitted without you guys' knowledge, like the last time we had payroll, you guys didn't even meet that week. So if I had waited for you to sign it, then well, I mean, it never even got signed. It's not my job. I don't need to. Yeah, but in my humble opinion, whoever sees the mistake should stop it, whether it's your job or not. Who's ever in the chain of line and says this so, is a mistake? So if I see someone else's, if, if it's another pay, that's, there's an error, and I stop it, and I'm going to get the heat from be it the police or the highway department because I changed something and I was wrong. How is this any different? Well, this, well, this, is, this is you have you at this case you have us to fall back on because yeah, we said not to. Yeah, it's different, Don. But this is this is an elected official. So this is an ethics violation. This is something to go to the ethics board because they're violating the town bylaw. And someone is benefiting from from this in a monetary way. Wait a minute. And I, I, no, Mike, this is not. They're playing games. To me, this is an ethics violation. Well, I'm thinking. I'm going back to Donna's. I, and Donna's question there, or, or example, is I think the first thing would be for you to ask us or them or someone before you pull it. But if it's clearly erroneous, and we say yes, then it should be pulled. But I mean, I think your your job in this whole stream of things is to ask the question. Is this correct? And if it is correct or isn't correct, we'll take it from there. Now, did anyone actually go to those departments, one of you, and say, give them a memo and say, this is not to happen. This is the memo that we've signed. Here you go. Everybody's gotten uh, minus. Everybody got Joe Fair's memo, which oh, rather. Oh, 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 that's that wasn't the thing that did it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We sent it out with. We sent it out with our. I, I'd have to get the memo out, but I think we sent out that opinion and said, here. I, I, you got to be kidding me! If you think you're going to disagree with the attorney's opinion that says you're not going to pay and say that's only an opinion. No, no. I, well, I mean, it is, it is but an I mean, opinion. Do you send a directive to that department head and say, "Do not do the same right. until they get that directive from you"? Yes, they did. Yeah, we did. They received it. We what? They, no, but they received it. Received which? The the direct not to do this anymore. Not to do this anymore. Okay, I, I'm seeing a, a gap here. here. It sounds like the department has got all this information. The person, did that person get a memo saying? Here, the department. I, mean, I think. Do you guys hand out paychecks or pay stubs or something every week or every two weeks? Yeah. yeah. Well, the direct deposit, isn't it? But you get a pay stub with it, right? Yeah. You hand something to somebody. Do a memo. Give it to every single staff member from and explain the policy. Because if this person is relying on her department head, you can't blame the person. She well, we're not blaming the person. Right, but I mean, it, it's going to continue because you're going to have a fight with the board of health person. But if every person knows it's improper, and then that person puts her time down again. You got that staff member. All right. Any more debate on this issue? I would, I would adjust oh. the payroll one so it doesn't include the holiday pay. Richard, we're discussing your 20 hours, but yeah. You, had, you, we were just discussing this, and we were on for eight, whatever. 
Nine o'clock. Uh, it's eight forty or whatever it was. Eight twenty. We're talking about employees making less, working less than twenty hours. Yeah, we asked for a mediator to be here tonight, but we were never notified whether we get a mediator or not. I don't think it's an issue subject to a mediator. It's an issue of, of, the, of the statute or the bylaw. Can I ask a question? Why? We got, you got the memo that says pay, people who work under 20 hours per week are not to be paid. So why? Well, we have an opinion from our legal department. Can we pay them? So you have to do the decision. You have an opinion. Okay, that is the time, but so, so, that so, here's, decision. so here's my question. One at a time. It was an opinion based on the information you were given. Right. So here's my question. If the opinion of town council is the opinion of the select board that employees working less than 20 hours per week don't get paid, and you knew that. Why do you continue to? We have, I have not got any more. Oh, 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 oh. Richard, Richard, asking. tone it down. Okay, no, you told me another. We that's why I wanted a mediator. Wait, Richard, tone it down. There is going to be no mediator here. Does this employee work more than 20 hours a week or less than 20 hours a week? Less than 20 hours a week. She's got ten hours she works every day. Less than twenty hours a week. Every day she works. No way, So Chris so Christmas comes at her job Thursday, she's not supposed to get paid or comes at her Friday, she doesn't work, she's not supposed to get paid. So it makes no sense. I would say that cafeteria monitors work Monday through Friday and they have set hours. So inevitably the holiday will probably fall on a day that they work and they don't get paid. Oh, well, like you said, put it in writing, you as a man will say that that's his decision. We don't have that. All right, as of right now, uh, here, take a, here. somebody want to make a motion on this issue? I would make a motion that we strictly enforce the bylaw that states employees working less than 20 hours per week do not get paid benefits. Is there a second to that motion? No, no second, the motion dies. Well, no, I mean, I'll go with the second based on the town council and it's something we've already said before. That's I remember the meeting we were it's at. Already been done. It's already been done. It's already been done. You're right. But well, well, obviously done. it has not been well, it has delivering. not been effectively communicated. And that's the part that we're missing. We have to effectively communicate that to department. Right. Can I can I suggest that the motion tonight will direct be Richard is sitting here whether or not there's a, a memo or not a memo, he's present when the motion is decided. And it's clear that someone says we didn't give an opinion. You want to give it an opinion? Now's the time to give it. Oh, oh. No, we're in the middle of a motion. I got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? We already have one. The discussion I want is we already have this bylaw. It's spelled out in English. You want to reiterate the bylaw, fine. But we're not. Why are we passing a resolution on a bylaw that's already been approved? I think that's what we're doing. We're, we're passing a resolution. Just the bylaw. Well, I think if you want to do something, I would make a recommendation to send a memo to every department head that this is the bylaw and we need to adhere to it. I thought, well. But we did that. Yes. We've already done that. I didn't hear the whole thing. Yeah. yeah but we, we've already done that. Right. That's what I'm saying. We've right. done it. We've right. done it again. Yeah. We're going to react to it again. We're yes. doing this again. Because it didn't get through. Mm. I mean, that's the point of this. It didn't get through. Right. We did not effectively communicate. This has nothing to do with the person that's receiving no. this benefit. No. It's, it's being fair to all the other employees. That's because if I, they I all think. stood up and said, we want that too, we couldn't afford to pay them. How many, how many other employees work less than 20 hours a week? How many do you have in highway? It doesn't even matter. One other. That person's not getting this benefit. So we would have to go town-wide and straighten this out with all the other employees who are not getting this benefit and we're in the same position as this person. And we're not. What the only thing I'm going to say in part of this discussion, we don't know what people have been talking about. There's been this thing's been circulating and circulating to a frenzy for the last six to ten weeks. <sighs> we have one board saying one thing, we're trying to say another thing. We got department heads are saying they haven't been informed. There is a gap in communication. Right. It's just not happening. Right. You're right. That's why we're That's why I wanted everybody in here to have this discussion, whether we didn't like it or not. We need to have all the parties here, yeah. once and for all, put this to bed. Because obviously there's people out here that don't understand it. And then we want to know why they don't understand it. I'm sorry, I missed that part of the conversation. You can imagine what it was. Is there a memo? The memo... That sounds a memo. 
Can I say this because while you're reading this? If there's not a clear piece of paper on the top of that pile of papers that says this Board of Selectmen says you're not to pay your employees, then we did not effectively communicate. And I would say to you, then that's what we're doing tonight because this, it, it says at the last select board meeting Tuesday night, the select board request an opinion. Be what request? I, now I've lost where I was. I would say to you, we, we should reiterate in a very clear do on not, a piece of paper. On a piece of paper yes. or email that you do not pay employees who work less than 20 hours. And that was what you discussed at your last meeting. That's the memo that I sent to you uh, uh, for review. It's in your packets. Okay. Um, and that's what. But I, I'm just so that clears up all the misunderstanding is I, we got a motion on the floor with a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, or is there. All I'm saying is I'm looking at the memorandum in here. Can we look at it right now and prove what that page? it gets sent immediately what tomorrow? Page? Tomorrow. What, pa what page? Uh, 39. Do you see it? The memo reads. This one, did this go out? No. You asked me not to send oh, I asked you not to send it. My problem. Okay. At the direction of the select board, any part-time employee who regularly works under 20 hours a week are not to be paid any benefits. These benefits include holiday, vacation, and sick. And I remember now, this was, we drafted this memo at the last meeting, then everybody said they were going to come, and I yeah. said, don't send this memo to right. throw fuel on the fire, let's get them in here and we'll talk about it. Right. So this memo didn't go out. I take responsibility for it not going out. I made the decision that since everybody was going to be in here tonight, let's not aggravate the the thing and fan the flames. So can we have this sent out? In, uh, can we have it to do it tonight? That would be lovely. So we well, wait a minute, let's take the vote. Is the vote to send out this memo that was dated January 8th as it appears in page 40, 39 of your packet? Is that the motion? I make a motion to send out the memorandum. There's another motion already, so we'll oh, right, sorry. Sorry. Like, get that up. What's your regulation? Like, yeah, let's, you want to withdraw your mo original motion? Sure, I withdraw my original motion. Withdraw your second, Jackie. All right. I make a motion to have the memorandum from the select board to all department heads, boards, and committees sent out tonight that no employee working less than 20 hours a week should be entitled to any benefits. Is there a second? Second. All in favor. Any further discussion? Are you going to change the date? Tonight? Yeah, are you going to change the date? Did you this day forward? <coughs> well, wait a minute. We're sitting with a... Let's, while we're talking about this, we're sitting with a payroll that must, does it reflect Monday's pay? No, it no, has to be the first time. It has New Year's Day on it. And I would say that you can't change that because department heads obviously didn't know back then that they shouldn't pay them, so which is why I was saying effective yesterday, going forward, nobody should be paid. All right, let's make sure we understand. So your motion is to send out this memo. With today's date. With today's date and allow the January 1st paid payroll to go through. That's it. I disagree with the January first payroll, but whatever. I, I, I have troubles with that too because it almost seems like I'm being complicit in. I would say that that has to be changed. And I would say that based on our lack of communication, which is very apparent, it hasn't you, been an issue since 2004. All right, I don't know what minute. changed. Wait a minute. Let's do. We got Liz's motion. Did anybody ever second them to send a memo? Yes. The, the, the moment, met, but the, it's just to send the motion. The just memo. Send the memo. Just send the memo. Nothing about the payroll. No. All right. So, is there any further discussion on the memo? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 What do you want to do about the payroll for January first? The holiday pay. That happened before this memo went out. All right. So, kids, nothing we can do about it. I don't disagree with that, but I, I still think the bylaw is fairly clear that. I agree with you. But we're making a stance with a, a formal memo to everybody that's basically black and white. You don't do it anymore. The memo would have went out on Wednesday. Right. But it didn't. No, no, I, I know. Okay. Just, just think of the ramifications, and I'm only asking the question. What are you going to say when your one employee comes in and says, I want holiday pay? Everybody that works less than 20 hours a week is going to come and say, I want to get paid for New Year's. Well, that's what I'm asking. What are you going to do with those people? Before you Their department heads weren't making that mistake. Send to us. <laughs> Yikes. Can I clarify something? One, one, one second. Yeah. 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 One second. No, no. Does I don't have an answer, Michael. I just, I just think that this, this got blown out of proportion. Well, then, there, were, 
then we're going to take a care, very careful vote on the payroll lot um, warrant when it comes up now, Nilda. It's been my experience that when there's been an error, corrections are made to payroll all the time. Hmm. If they're done within the next pay period, which is um, you know reasonable at, at this point, the employees get paid twice a month, right? Mm -hmm. Every other week, yeah. Every other week. So the fact that this occurred, and I, I kind of recall at a meeting you guys had a conversation that she should not have been paid for New Thanks Year's Day. So Thanks that was in a public meeting yeah. and documented. I mean, you have to be sort of in another space time to not know that this was high on the agenda of several people. So I would, to satisfy David, because I agree with him, that you make the correction January 1st, you can't go back to earnings of 2013, let that go, and then move forward, and then put some protocol in place that would give some stop safe uh, guards as to who's getting that information, and then they have the department or the uh, officials, uh, Vicki and Donna, will be able to have the uh, backup of you guys. All right. All right. Um, Is there an easy way to attract employees that are entitled to holiday pay in your departments, Donna and Vicki? Is there a way to track I them? Just, I don't track that. So you, you can't. Rich, is there a way? Of, I mean, it's up to, I know you guys know what you guys are doing in the departments, but I mean, for payroll. And it's it's every been budgeted for a year, for payment budget for a year. You're talking $52 in a day. I don't think that's going to kill the cow. But it's also, it's also all the other town employees that work part time that don't what get. What about the town employees that take off half a day and don't, don't put in for it? That's the same thing. All right. Okay. All right, so we've got the motion. On, we've taken care of the motion on the memo. The question is, what do you do with the payroll? Payroll. Payroll. Well, I, I think I, I follow up on Hilda's thing as well. Is we need some sort of system in place that stops it, so it doesn't become this big hairball of stuff. It just gets stopped and it's in the system. Let, yeah. Well, here, Donna, which one of these payroll warrants contains that holiday pay for her? I think it's under the general. Which would be the big one? Um, yes. Can I ask you to come up and identify which payroll warrant? Because as we vote on these, I want to be specific. Do you know what the amount is? John, before you go, do you have the wire? Oh, you need the card. I have to use my iPad or my iPhone. You just gave me that. That was the first one I ever had, so I thought it was inside, but it wasn't. So this is so it's this one. It's this one. So it's but you if you change the I'm not saying we're gonna change it. I just want I just want to be able when we vote on it, I want to be clear which vote one we're voting on. So if people vote yes or no. Oh, I see. All right. So that's the. So when I call this one out, this is the one. Yeah. I mean, so you don't want to see this. Because we'd have to figure out exactly how much. Well, if, if they vote no, then if they vote no to sign the warrant, then you're going to have to do that. But that's what I'm just saying. I want being clear. You guys want to tackle warrants now? Yeah. All right. So what we've got. So there's a memo. Yeah, we, yeah that's all set. Yeah. So what I've got is P warrant P14-29, which to be clear, contains a holiday pay for the employee that's been questioned here. All in favor, uh, do I need a motion to sign? Can you make a motion if you're going to vote now? You can't make a motion. I, I can't make a motion, so. Someone's got to say something or the issue is really going to die right there. Going once, going twice. So is it going to be signed? I would make a motion to sign payroll, whatever you just said. In its full $73,035.59. Am I on it? No. 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 So yeah, I make a motion to sign payroll warrant 14-29 in the amount of $73,035.59. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. No. I abstain. You're going to abstain? I'm abstaining. What are you going to do? No. So it fails. Someone want to make a motion to sign a corrected payroll warrant P14-29 with the correction of reducing the payment by uh, the holiday pay for that employee? Because otherwise you got, you got one, two, two, two and two and one abstention. You, there's no motion to sign this warrant. You got what? You can't vote? I, I voted no. Oh. So we got two, David and I are no. Jackie and Liz are yes, and you're an abstention. So motion doesn't pass. Well, the reason for my abstention is I don't think we resolved the problem. The, the date that we sent the official notices is on is before is after all this happened. Exactly, which is why you should just pay it and moving forward right, that's we right. deal with the issue. We're wrong, no matter what we're doing. We're wrong. We're wrong. Absolutely. We Absolutely. Are. But the point is we haven't come to an understanding with department heads who think they're right. So shame on them for not being here. That think they're right. I understand that. But we have to make an effort to bring this together instead of being a bulldog in this closet because we haven't resolved the issue and we won't resolve it. If we don't want to come together, it's a different story. Well, I don't think we exhausted all the attempts to resolve this issue. The memo that's going to go out tonight. That's my extension. Is a solid effort to give the communication to those to the to all boards all right. until that's clear i don't think we should not sign that right, and legally we have to sign it because it's been well legally, they legally have, to, have to get paid they to yeah get they paid. have to get paid right so we still somebody give me some help i'll i'll change my vote go so yes i want an understanding here and I don't think we're doing a good job of having people against each other without trying to resolve this 100%. I agree with your statement. Don't want to, uh... Okay. Now I have payroll warrant P14-29-2. Ed can't sign. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have payroll warrant P14-29-3. Jackie can't sign. So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just payroll? Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a full one, but there doesn't, I don't seem to have enough of them. Ed, can you sign that one and then send it back? Wait, wait a minute. This is in the larger folder. Oh, there's more in the larger folder. All right, so I got P14-29-1. It's 29, I can't sign. Which is Liz cannot sign for $140,317. So moved. What says? Is there a second? P14. Ed? 29. Oh, dash three. Oh, okay. Second. I need a second. Yeah. second. Those in favor? Those, thank you, David. Aye. Those in favor, aye. I abstain. Mike, you can't sign this one. Oh. <laughs> That's me down the bottom. There's one from my, because last time I signed it, I wasn't supposed to sign it. I'm trying not to do that. It's okay. So there's got to be more. It's the P1429-3. I have I can't PD. PD. Oh, I can turn that. 14 dash 29 in the amount of $41,708. So moved. There a second. Second. Long Double favor. second. All right. Jackie, I can't find this one. And then I have I can't sign this W14-21. 28A in the amount of $2,919.56. Everybody can sign. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I can't sign that one. You have a pen? 
Yeah, that's all done, right? I got it. All right. Um, we're on regular business. I'm going to take open time for the public because then we're going to go into executive session to discuss litigation. And we have a phone call with the uh, town attorney at 9 o'clock. Let me go first. I, um, I guess I am assuming that the memo about turning turnovers into the accountant's department went out because I did not actually receive one. But I was someone actually gave me a copy of them, and I still am not getting them turned into my office by the police department and by your office. They are getting left in my box. And I thought the memo, I got a copy from somebody else that said they were supposed to bring them up to my office. That's not. That is. That was correct. The memo did go out. Memo. Everybody. I did not receive it in my office. It was not in the register. It was not in my mailbox. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was not in my mailbox. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's keep this under control here before I lose my control. You, you know, we're not going to get into this. We all know the situation in this room in this building. So we're going to tone it down, and you're going to talk to each other with respect, and you're not going to interrupt each other, or I'll do the interrupting. My apologies. All right. We will reiterate the memo out to everybody again. Reggie, you will deliver ours to her office, and, that, and I will talk to and send. I will talk to the police chief about it also. And they should be turned over in a reasonable amount of time, right? I don't know what a reasonable amount of time is, but certainly it's expected they would be turned in with an appropriate amount of time. A reasonable amount of time is it certainly. I don't know what a number is. I don't know whether that's a day. Like a week? My turnover, I get two copies. I just bring it right upstairs and right. take mine from my office. That's right. a reasonable amount of time. I mean, that's personally, I don't hold on to anybody's checks because someone might want to balance their checkbook. So every day I turn in checks, or at least every other day. They should certainly get turned in, I, I assume, within 24 to 48 hours of receipt. And I'm, I'm only bringing this up because the auditors made a big point that this was a big fry. And I just want to, as we read the papers, the audit was all over the papers. We're just trying to make sure that what they want to happen happens so that when they come back in March, we don't have this on our report once again. I spoke to the chief. I'll speak to him again. Thank you. All right. I have one, more, one thing. Yeah. The Friends of the Library are having a, a fundraiser <laughs> on February 7th. Good for you, David. At Edwards Library. It's, it's February 7th, Friday. It's a wine tasting with donations. And I think it starts around 5 o'clock. This is a prelude to they're going to have a mini golf as well within the library. It's set up like little mini golf thingies where sponsors can um, sponsor holes. And this is all for, by the Friends of the Library to raise money for said library. When is it? February 7th is the wine tasting. Okay. And sometime after that, I think the next day, they're going to have the the putt putt mini golf. In the, well, it's inside the, the library. So, so kids could go. It's not on the same night as the white days. All right. <laughs> oh, back to open time for the public. Anybody else? Oh, no. I gave my. I just yes, you did. I have a, a. I hope there will be a supportive response from this board. For two and a half years, the senior center. Uh oh. Has been waiting for a sink. <laughs> a hand washing sink. We have gone through changes in the Board of Health. We have not been able to do, to be in compliance in terms of regulations with food handling safety. We have the plumbing inspector. We have another plumbing inspector. They make us go through hoops in terms of what needs to be done and then nothing becomes of it. It's been on your agenda for who knows how long. And we had an estimate that um, I think was around $1,100. It seems like you guys can make decisions about other things. I know free, I know reserve is low, I know that. But we have been in that building, I mean in that location, and basically, doing it on our own because we don't feel that we have the select board on board in terms of the importance of a hand washing sink. 
And so I, we have our board meeting tomorrow, I would be elated and they would be very happy if you guys can take action tonight and say to the finance committee, give these guys $1,100 and give them their sink. For is that really how much a hand washing what sink costs? $1,100 for a sink. Kind of well, expensive. no, no, it's is that it they gold? have to do a cutout. They have to do the cutout. They have I know, to I know, but so I, I, I don't see $11,000. 1100 1100 Oh. <laughs> Me and Claudia. Yeah, yeah. the budget. So we have the money. When we did the budgets last year, we included that hand well, washing sink in the So the what's budget. the delay? The compliance issue. What compliance? Um, uh, <clears throat> well, the plumbing inspector recommended that the senior center gets a variance. And it has to be brought to Boston. Huh? Yeah. Why? So. A variance for what? Not that you're well, a plumber. I thought, Jackie, that you had told Jennifer that you were prepared to, to represent the board on that, you know, going to there, Boston right, and right. that variance. Um, I was trying to get Tommy and Adam together, and that's kind of a tough thing to do because they're both this working. Is so sad. I, mean, I know, it just goes on and on and on. Tommy and who? Rich. My, my husband. Rich, why do we need a variance for yeah. the sink? Do you know? You know. That's what I thought. Can't you just have a little can't we corner just sink? Why do we need a cutout? Why then? Why does it just have to be a sink designated for plan. washing hands? That's all it needs to be. A sink designated for washing hands. Now, but right now there's there's a double sink. Um, Didn't we talk? We had a plan yeah, to put that. Yeah, it's in. all. I thought this was all done and over. So, yeah. so yeah. where's that eleven hundred dollars? Where's the eleven hundred dollars? It's in there. Where in the budget? That's the town thirty. The building. You sure it's still there? I'm positive. We, I'll pull out the detailed information. We scheduled that. Mm -hmm. So we did. It was scheduled. Oh. The eleven hundred dollars is still in the budget. Yes. In a line item somewhere. Not a separate line item. No. No, but I mean in a line item somewhere. Yes. Which line item? The town hall. This town hall building maintenance. It's not. That's. Oh. I'll pull up. No, I'm not. I question what you're saying. It's just why wouldn't it have been? dedicated to council and agent. Well, they did. And then you guys, when we were going over the budgets, you guys had included in this because it's part of the building. The building. They did want to do that. The sink has been around for years. Well, the other issue is they have no hot water in the bathroom. That's the other issue. There's Why no hot they water? they never had hot water. So Why is there no hot did. water in this bathroom? Because of the, the delay. Doesn't it take too long to get there? Yes. But the water is hot. They just got to let it run. So let it run. You can't because it's a 10 second thing. Right. We, were, are, we wanted to change out right. the faucets. That's true. In order. Well, I understand what you're saying is, but it can be fixed by changing out the faucets right. and all that hot water. Right. If somebody comes in and runs it. Right. So if they get hot water in the bathroom. Doesn't sound like a big dollar. Wait a minute. Right. If they get hot water in the bathroom, does that eliminate the need for the hand washing no. sink? No, 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 no. Because it's food preparation. Right. I just Versus want to be clear that I was hearing. But can I ask you a question? There's how many sinks are there now? Two. Yeah. This and one has really to be. This has to be for a wheelchair. Yeah. It was planned on being put outside of the men's room, not the wall there. Okay. So we yeah. yeah. so, yeah. Okay. So it's a whole new setup. Yeah. There's a room. Mm -hmm. all wall well, the They're not utilizing what was in the kitchen. No, that was the last that I heard. That's where eleven hundred dollars comes from. All right. They got a cut. I mean, we did get three bids. I mean, it's you know it's been a while, so those bids may probably will not hold. Increases do occur, but. I think that you know the, the the senior, the friends of the of the council would would step up and you know make a differential contribution within a reasonable amount. But I, I, I think it just would make them feel that they feel counted, that they are doing things on behalf of the seniors, and that they can move ahead and do other things. So, so I just, what does this tunnel do? He says yes, and, and yeah. he, your work says no, and. We, we're in limbo, right? The, the, the report, money's there. The report that Adam told me was they're trying to get a commercial kitchen in here. That's what they want to do. In order to do that, you need a grease crack. But after in order to do grease crack, it's kind of good for a separate system, which isn't big enough to handle it. For a hand watching sink, a grease crack? <laughs> well, no, they want to make a commercial kitchen out of it. No, 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 no way. It doesn't accept it. it we've said yeah, that since so day one. It can't have, have a commercial it's kitchen here. No. So okay. All they're probably going to do is hand this. So sink outside the water wall there. Ties to the hot water, cold water pipe, the red out wall. It was supposed to be an easy deal, but 
How many people do you want to cook for? Oh. How many people do they want to cook They can't, they can't go through no, 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 no. This is why we, we, the we, uh, subject system won't handle yes, this. It's just the other part of this is we can't actually cook in the kitchen. We can't use the dishwasher. And uh, the only thing we're using it for is for the food that gets brought in. If it needs to be warmed up in the oven, that's done. There's certain utensils and things that need to be washed. The hand washing in terms of the people that are preparing is important. And so, um, that's that's really what we're addressing. We're not even looking at having a full lunch, a prepared uh, meal for anybody in the near future because it's just not doable. Well, you did want to fry it later at one point. Yeah, but they're not they're not, they, 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 they they're not getting any. They're, they're, we won't talk about fry later. No, because <laughs> that's another. All right. right. Don't even go there. Does anybody want to do <laughs> anything? <laughs> Does anybody want to do anything about the? I'll go in on Sunday and I'll do it myself. No. You're not a plumber. Does anybody want to do anything about the senior center sink, hand washing sink? That's well, I think you need to just authorize the purchase. So how do we get to them? I make a motion to offer the bills to Reggie, and Reggie will pay the bill. Mm -hmm. Just right. get a three. They got to have three phone bills. Yeah, we, we have three bids. But we they have probably visit. yeah yeah we have to revisit that. But if I go there tomorrow, here's an say, interest. If they, if they put the hand washing sink in, is this going to tie into the same hot water line in the in the bathrooms? So that if they run that the thing. yeah. So if they run yep. the water in yep. the hand washing sink, yep. it'll bring hot water into the yeah. But they got to change the faucet. No, but right. if they they instead of changing the faucet in the, in the bathroom, right. bring the hot water into the hand washing sink, which will get it closer to the. But it, but it's still a long distance from the. Oh, it is still a long distance. Okay. And, and that um, issue at one time that the water when we were using the water, it was the bathrooms up here were losing pressure or something. Is that no longer the case? No. Okay. Because those are all small flows. All right. Do we? I, I, yes. Somebody I please. To authorize the senior center to put a hand washing sink in their kitchen. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 You still got to go. You call me Reggie? I mean, um. Nilda. I'm Nilda. Mrs. Cohen. Mrs. Cohen. You need to, you, you don't forget, you still have to go through the process of uh, dealing with the building inspector and the plumbing inspector. Look at the, um, the difference between. I don't think. The rates in 2012 could be added. George, have a comment? Huh? Do you have a comment? Yeah. A comment to the public? No boycott. Are you kidding? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh, my God. Rich, Rich, you need anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Do you need anything Thanks, else? Thanks, Nilda. Bye, Nilda. Oh, you didn't get to say? Okay, that's right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of putting for pay. I'm over 20 hours. I used that money to put the sink in. Discussion on each guy. Oh. Yes, right there. Discussion on each All right, then we'll do that next. Go ahead. You're on. You got the floor. Good night, Good night. Good night. Thank you. Got you. The floor. Well, we're not going into executive session yet. You're, you're here for interesting okay. things. Um, I would just like to talk about Hampshire Council of Governments, the Hampshire Power Quarterly Savings Summary. I did some research on it. And what I found is their rates, their adder rates, hey, before, excuse have me, gone up. Uh, hey, Donna, before you go, there, I see on here there's a bill warrant. I didn't have a bill warrant. Okay, look at That was at 1428A. Oh, okay. So, I'm sorry. I thought we were missing a warrant. Excuse me. I didn't want you to get away. What do you want? I apologize. Anyways, I'm saying that the HCOG rates, okay, their adder costs have gone up substantially from, if you look at uh, April, I mean, um, 2012 compared to what their rates are now in the uh, January, February, and March, uh, the total that we had to pay them above the West Mico, Wamico bill was $5,427.93. Look at, if you get They took away the profit sharing, I thought, as well. I think they've gone up on their adder. What's that? Um, it's the, their, you know, they take a certain amount off of the, um, if you, if you look at this, okay, they multiply, okay, this is their cost, the rate, by the usage, how much electricity mm -hmm. was used. And then that money goes up to here, okay? So, so this subtract. number times this equals this? It equals, yeah, this. That's, okay. that's Hampshire Council of Governments, okay? So then, 
um, th this is the savings, okay, because that's what we paid them, okay, rather than this to, to Western Mass. Uh, so instead uh, of paying Western Mass Electric $4,700, we paid Hitchcock $3,000. Right. So there's a savings of $1,600. Right. But now, this year, in 2013, the rates have gone up substantially and we're paying a lot more. And our uh, agreement contract is now, um, they made an amendment and the way I even got, um, where the way I even got onto this is because the um, uh, in the amendment they're saying that because a lot of towns are involved in this that the the state uh, utilities has said that we can be individually uh, these prices but now things have changed and the rates have gone up and they're charging us a lot more money than they should and besides that they charge us forty five hundred dollars. Four thousand five hundred and twenty dollars annual dues. Well, on top of all those that other. That goes to help that, that's, that's, a, that's for a lot of other things. Yeah, that's right. for that. It has nothing to do with that. Okay. So what I would recommend is that they have a they have an administrator up there. His name is Todd. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's Greg. Greg. Uh, Todd Lee. No, uh, Craig Rogers. He's the guy in charge of this. Actually, sent me a memo this week about this. Well, maybe there's someone from their office. And they should come here and talk to you because I, I don't think um, this is some of these are only three or four, uh, three month spreads. And I had some concerns on the water department side because for three months they were, the savings were higher. They were more beneficial for Worcester Mass. But when I took the whole year into it, I was still up three or $4,000. But things are changing because, like anything else, they're, they're pushing for. <clears throat> People buy their stuff on the stock market. Right. They bought on the stock market. And if you give a long-term commitment, or you're at the end of a long-term commitment, it's not as healthy as it was before. Mm -hmm. All right? So they're, they're talking about a new long-term commitment with, with better rates. But the market is floating all over the place. I wish this was oil, gas, and electric, because it would be a lot cheaper for everybody. When we first uh, signed up, though, well, Western Mass Electric is one of the most expensive electric companies in, in, in the state, not New England. Right. But Rogers uh, and, and the COG have done an outstanding job over the years saving money. There has been a problem, I think, with some of their investment because they they had a fixed rate for us. Remember, well, we, we had, had a, real good. But we had us, they backed it up. They well, guaranteed it. But we also had it. profit sharing with that as well. Right. At the end, of, and, and that got changed as well. A, a year or two into it. I, I, I wouldn't jump on changing this until we the an explanation. The projections are for the future because the way they were talking about it, there's some changes coming. When is their when is our commitment to them up? I think we can give it up with a two month notice. I think. So, so do we want to invite? I would. I would can invite. you opt out of just that part of it? If you yeah, you don't. Have oh, yeah, this is well, yeah. So because there are changes, and you know, I mean, the one the last change I read from him was if, if you don't want to stay with it, you can jump out now and you can go back to your regular user, which is Western Mass Electric. Right. But what is their experience about next month? Are they coming out with a new investment right. to buy long-term fixed pricing? You know what I'm saying? We don't know when their, their buying is going to be. That's a substantial amount increase. I mean, you know. I know, but let's let them explain to it. Right. But you average that over a 12-month right, period. Right, that's over three months. Savings. What's the average over 12 Because that, what Or it, last year. Well, we didn't oh, get last the last year. quarter you yet. You get the 12-month period, okay. you'll find out. In, in my case, I found out that, um, yeah, there was three or four months in a row that we, we were paying more than Western Mass. But overall, I, uh, we did it better. And, but there was a flag going up because I wasn't getting the comparison prices that I asked for. Right. So, all right, so they need to come in here and talk to you. Well, I know. Would you Does anybody that? have any idea what Vermont Yankee closing is going to do with the local? It's all about the grid. Uh, the, the yeah. Local cost. Right. We'll send them a memo and ask them to come in. Is it Jeff or Ken Olson? Because no, I'm. Well, I, I would. Greg. Greg Rogers. Ask for both of them. Okay. Well, Todd's the. Uh, is Todd still the administrator? Yeah, but Greg, I think, is the section chief in charge of the. Uh, well, it'd be nice to hear from Todd to see because he hasn't come by in a while to talk to us if there's any other. Hcog things that are out there for there are there's well, the name of the maybe you can come by and update us on that. The other thing, but it's long term commitments where you're going to sign a agreement for three and four five years. But they're doing like solar stuff. They're doing other things. So, but the other thing, Ed, is that it says National Grid or Western Mass. So, how do we know 
Where, is, is, he's just giving you a price comparison of what the okay. national grid is paying. Yeah. But say Western Mass Electric Company has the rights to Southampton. Right, that's what with I thought. With the exception of a small section of the bonds, which Wildcats. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that we're going to do that. We're going to invite him now. Um, we're supposed to go into executive session to discuss litigation on the UML property under Chapter 30A, Section 21, Number 3, which is. To discuss. Did I say? One number did I say? Number three. To discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on a bargaining or litigating position. Move to go into executive session by roll call. McDougall aye. Here's aye. Molten aye. Elon aye. Paul aye. Elon aye. 